Kare Shalom. Welcome to our watercolor journey. Learning to preserve the light in your painting is very important. So let's do this. The materials used are listed in the description below. On the palette, we have a watery cobalt blue, rose madder, burnt sienna, lemon yellow, and Painscary black, and hooker's green. The cans and paper is taped to a flat board. Heinrich paints the sky wet on dry this time. He starts with cobalt blue and the Raphael Petit Gris Pure number 12 round. For this type of painting, a squirrel brush, a mop or a quill will be the best because these brushes hold a lot of water. He adds a touch of rose madder and uses a lot of water to help distribute the pigment. The sky is slightly darker at the top and he dilutes the pigment as he adds water towards the horizon line. The rose matter helps to warm up the sky a bit and to create a bit of dimension in the sky. Let the painting dry. He starts to paint the little house with a Rosemary & Co. Kalinsky Sable No. 3 round and Burnt Sienna. If you are uncomfortable with just painting, you can draw the house beforehand. He opted for Burnt Sienna here to bring a bit of brightness and colour into the landscape. Burnt Sienna is a warmer colour, so it will bring the house forward a little. He wants the trees in the background to be very pale, so he mixes a grey from cobalt blue and burnt sienna with a touch of lemon yellow to start the trees around the house. This is a fairly neutral colour and it is quite transparent, so it forms a nice contrast with the distinctive roof of the house. He adds a touch of cobalt to the base of the trees to create some shadows and to establish different values. Keep the mix light and watery to preserve the transparency of the pigment. He mixes some of the three primaries to create a greyish colour for the door and windows. These are painted very loosely. He randomly uses the colours on the palette to paint the trees on the right. Again, he mainly uses the three primaries to get a fairly neutral colour for this first layer.
He adds a touch of lemon yellow and then cobalt blue to add a bit of green to the trees on the right. This is a little bit warmer than the neutral background, so it creates depth. The warmth comes to the front and then the neutral pushes back a little bit. He also adds some burnt sienna to give more warmth and dimension to the trees. He mixes some paints grey and burnt sienna for the tree on the left. He uses the Rosemary & Co. Sable Blend number no. 0 rigger here. This tree is close to the foreground so it has more detail and is somewhat darker than the other trees. He builds the trunk and branches by adding different strengths of these two colours. The burnt sienna brings a touch of warmth to the dark brown created by this mix. He keeps this tree fairly scraggly because it only serves to direct your eyes to the house. If the tree was fuller, it would almost obscure the house, so he keeps it light and loose. Remember to ground the tree by drawing a few lines underneath it. This will also serve as the shadow of the tree. He uses a watery mix of cobalt and lemon yellow to add a few green leaves to the tree. He adds a tiny fence line to create interest. This is done with Payne's Grey and it's very loose, just a suggestion of a fence. The little poles are not precise, they lie in different directions at different angles to keep it interesting. He adds some trunks to the trees in the back and then mixes Payne's Grey and Hooker's Green to form a very dark shadow green for the trees. The light is coming from the left, so the shadows are on the right. This also helps to build your values. The white of the paper is your lightest value. Then the neutrals become the middle values and the dark green gives the dark value. Now you have depth in the little forest and it is a lot more interesting to look at. He builds the values in the tree on the left by adding some stronger pigment.
He mixes a bit of blue and rose matter to create a soft purple for the shadow side of the house. He then adds some hooker's green and paints grey for the greenery around the house. He uses a watery mix of cobalt blue and paints grey to add shadows to the snowy field. These shadows help to define the terrain. He gives definition to the little path a bit more and then adds some detail to the house. He uses some gouache to add a bit of snow to the roof and to the branches of the trees. Please do us a favor and comment on this video. It really helps us a lot. You are also welcome to share your paintings with us on Instagram. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you soon. Vaya con Dios.